In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the dividend capture strategy and whether or not I think it's viable. I'm going to show you an interesting way to backtest the strategy. So if that interests you, then you're in the right place. All right, let's get into it. So in case you aren't familiar with it, the dividend capture strategy is a short term strategy, ideally, where you buy a dividend paying stock just before its ex dividend date. You collect the dividend and then, and then sell the stock shortly after at or above your cost basis. The goal is to capture the dividend income without holding the stock for a long period, hoping to profit from a potential price recovery after the ex-dividend date. So basically the stock drops by the dividend amount on the ex-div date and you're patiently waiting for it to recover that amount before you sell it. One of the main drawbacks of this strategy is that it's difficult to know ahead of time how many days a particular stock usually takes to recover the dividend amount. This trading strategy is only good if the stocks you're doing it on tend to recover quickly and keep rising. So I've recently been using AI to backtest this strategy on dividend stocks to see which ones I might want to try it on. Let me give you a demo of how I do that now. So the AI tool I've been using to uh, backtest the dividend capture strategy is Perplexity Pro. And uh, unfortunately, you need the, the Pro version to be able to do this because uh, you need to use this right here, um, right here, Labs, Perplexity Labs. This is like... It says turns your ideas into completed docs, slides, dashboards, and more. So whatever complex uh, task you type in here, it'll like scour the web. And it's like, I think it's like an AI agent or whatever. And it like does a whole bunch of things in the background that assembles reports and, you know, interactive dashboards and stuff. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty complex and uh, it's really helpful for things like this. So I have a perplexity pro account and that's what I do this with. And I recommend it. It's really good. I use perplexity for almost everything. So, but you know, maybe whatever, if you have a, a pro account of like ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever, maybe this could do it too. But I like perplexity. One of the reasons is because whatever you type in, it automatically chooses the best AI model it thinks for whatever task it's doing. But if you want to, you could change right here. You can, you know, do use Claude, GPT, Gemini, Grok. So you have access to all of the best, uh, models right within perplexity that's why i like it but uh anyway i'm going to be using perplexity pro for this uh demonstration and it's 20 bucks a month if you wanted to try it or even if you don't want to try perplexity pro maybe just follow along and uh see if you could recreate it in whatever you know llm you're currently using so before i actually go into the uh, ai tool and just start you know typing a bunch of stuff and then have it go on its way i like to just go into my text program and you know carefully craft the prompt because the prompting is like the most important thing out of this whole thing. So if you don't have a good prompt, you're not going to get good results. So, you know, just take your time and, and create the prompt, like in a lot of detail. So the tool knows exactly what it's supposed to do and uh, be very specific and then you should get good results. So this is what I came up with and what I've been using it says, I'm looking to use the dividend capture strategy. By the way, I'm using this, uh, on two different stocks and it's comparing them in like a dashboard and seeing, showing which one's better. I said, I'm looking to use the dividend capture strategy on either company name one, and I replace this with a company with a ticker and put the ticker right there or company name two and then ticker two around their respective dividend events. I would like to buy $20,000 of each stock one day before their respective ex div dates. Then so I would be entitled to the dividend and then sell those shares after the ex div date only when the price is at or above my purchase price. My profits would be the dividend income and any share price appreciation. You can close the position, presumably for a loss, after 30 days if it fails to reach my purchase price. Please backtest this strategy for both of these stocks for the past eight dividend events using historic stock prices from Yahoo Finance. Calculate the win rate, days in trade, cumulative days in all trades, ROI, and the annualized ROI for each event and overall, and any other stats you think would be helpful. Please include tables and charts, then build an interactive dashboard so I can clearly see the winner. Thanks. All right. So, uh, you know, you could change this however you want, but I found this gives me pretty good results. And uh, it's very important you say, you know, what you want the tool to backtest and, you know, the stats you want and where to get the data from. I saw one of the examples in perplexity was, you know, grabbing the, the stock prices from Yahoo Finance. So that's what I just put there. And uh, so it's an apples to apples comparison. I put like buy $20,000 of each stock. So if you, cause if you do like a hundred shares or something, you know, if one stock's $200 and one stock's $20, it's not a fair comparison. So just do a dollar amount and not share amount. And, uh, yeah, you could try something like this or come up with something even better. So I'm going to select this and copy it and head on over to uh, perplexity to, uh, run the lab. Uh, one important thing before you copy and paste it is to actually replace the company name. So I would do something like FedEx company 
or corporation. I'm not really sure. I'll just put FedEx. It'll know what I'm talking about. And then I would put FDX and then I compare it to probably, I don't know, let's say UPS. So United Parcel Service ticker UPS. There we go. Now I would copy this and then head on over to perplexity and then paste this in right here and then make sure you're in the labs thing right here or else you know it's not going to give you a good result the labs is what does the cool stuff like creating the tables and charts and the dashboard and everything so i'm going to press this right here and it's going to take about nine minutes so i'm going to pause the video and then come back in nine minutes and if you want to you can like once you do it you can follow along and see the steps that it's doing it's pretty interesting but i'm not going to bore you with that okay so it's finished and uh here are the results and you see there's a few tabs up here this is the labs this gives you like a summary of everything that it did i'm just going to show you the lab section first um it has like you know a rundown of everything it did right here and gives you an executive summary and it says the parameters like what it did you know, 20,000 per trade, one business day before ex div date, exited when the price reaches or exceeds the purchase price or after 30 days maximum. And I, you could try playing with this and maybe make it longer, 60 days or 90 days, or just hold it indefinitely. I don't know. But uh, I just did 30 days because I was only back testing for the last two years. So if you're saying exit after like, you know, 120 days or something, that might give you weird results because you're only holding it for two years. But uh, anyway, back test period, if you, Maybe if you didn't mind, uh, you know, this process taking longer than nine minutes to generate, maybe you could do more dividend events. They'll probably take a lot longer to, to generate, but maybe you want to do that. And it says where it got the data from. And it gives you a nice table here and it shows you the winner. Uh, obviously, UPS was the winner here. And it shows you the uh, individual trades. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll go more into this in the app later, but I'm just skipping this to get to the summary. Okay, blah, blah, blah. investment recommendations. So it tells you at, at the bottom like what it recommends to do. So it says for UPS, it's recommended and it's a superior historical performance for dividend capture and shows you the advantages and FedEx says not recommended. So uh, the conclusion, it demonstrates UPS is a superior choice for dividend capture strategy and it shows you all this stuff. And now let me go to the app. This part's uh, really cool. So it generates a, a cool little app for the for the whole back test and it shows the clear winner right here and it shows you why and higher total returns better average roi better risk management it shows you the performance summary right here average days in trade this is helpful because you don't want to be in these that long you know it's a, a dividend capture strategy not a, a buy and hold strategy so you want to get it, get out of there pretty quick a lot of these tests i've been doing i'm going to show you a couple over here some of them are like less than two days average so so these results actually weren't that great, but you know, UPS is not, not bad. And you can see FedEx here it actually did really well, except for the one huge loss. And, uh, here's UPS had one decent size loss, but not as big as the uh, FedEx has performance visualization. And this one cumulative performance is pretty indicative of uh, the final results. So UPS was a lot better. And for key insights, it's, you know, it says some right down here and uh don't know why won't let me scroll in here but there's three more boxes i can't scroll right now but uh yeah so that's the app it generates and for assets you could see where you know did all the the python coding and everything behind the scenes which is pretty cool and all the charts and the tasks and this is uh the tasks it gave itself to be able to go around and fetching the proper data and do it doing whatever it had to do to to figure this out pretty interesting process but uh, these are the results for uh, just for tests for FedEx versus UPS. And now I'm going to uh, show you a, a few other results for a, a few other stocks I did. So for this back test, I did uh, HP Inc. versus Regency Centers. And uh, these had similar win rates, but totally different uh, total returns. Regency Centers was much better for total returns. And they had similar average days in trade, but you can see the average ROI per trade, 2.04% versus 0.2%. You know, and if you go down to the labs and uh, 
I'm going to skip all this for now. Let's go to the recommendations. And it says, uh, based on the backtesting results, REG demonstrates superior performance characteristics for dividend capture. Stocks' larger dividend payments provide better risk-adjusted returns to justify the slightly longer average holding periods. So it says, for practical implementation, investors should focus on stocks with higher dividend yields like REG, avoid dividend dates near earnings announcement, consider blah, blah, blah. Okay, now let me check out the app. And you'll notice that, you know, whenever you do these back tests that the apps look slightly different, but you know, they're all functional and they all, you know, are very helpful. They just, they just look different each time. So it's just something to be aware of. And you could scroll down and, uh, look at all this. It says clear winner, REG significantly outperformed HPQ with 10 times higher total returns and 10 times higher average ROI per trade. So, uh, yeah, I <laughs> say if you're going to, you know, between these two stocks, I would definitely look to do uh, Regency Centers for uh, the dividend capture strategy. And uh, the next uh, two stocks I compared were uh, Dick's Sporting Goods and T. Rowe Price. And I'm just going to head straight to the app for this one. It was a very clear winner here. And Dick's is pretty, pretty good for this strategy, I would say. At a 100% win rate, total ROI of 2.84%, and uh, average days in trade, 2.2%. You know, just if you want to do the uh, the annualized returns for that 2.84%, you know, for two days <laughs> in a trade, that's pretty good. And when you compare it to T-Row price, your average days in trade are 23.9. So, yeah, your total returns are 1,400. But for, for Dix, it's, you know, 4,500. And cumulative, you're only in these trades, eight trades for 18 total days. Whereas with T-Row price for eight trades, you're in for 191 days. So... Yeah, between these two, it couldn't be uh, more clear. So Dix is uh, really good for this strategy, apparently. And this is cool. You can sort by either one of these. So you could see all the results of, of each trade. It's pretty clear that uh, Dix is, is the, the winner of this one. And, you know, if, if you wanted to, you'd, I would read through all this lab stuff. It gives a lot of interesting info, actually. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Dix versus T. Rowe Price. Not much of a competition. And uh, this last one I did was uh, interesting. This is uh, with Coca-Cola versus American Tower. And uh, they both had, you know, 100% win rate, which is good. And uh, average days in, in the trade was pretty amazing. 1.86 for Coke. And it's 5.13 for AMT. But you look at the overall ROI, and AMT actually had more. And the total returns were more. Because uh, AMT has a much higher dividend yield. So that was probably what that could get. Uh, chalked up to. And I'm going to just scroll past all this right now and check out the, the conclusion. It says the comprehensive backtest analysis demonstrates that while KO and AMT can successfully implement dividend capture strategies, AMT delivers superior stock risk adjusted returns that justify its selection as the preferred vehicle. The 2.66 overall ROI achieved by AMT combined with consistent profitability across diverse market conditions establishes a compelling case for its adoption. However, investors must carefully blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm going to check out the app. It says overall winner, it chose AMT. Even though, you know, the average days in trade was a little longer, the total returns were more, and they both had great win rates. So, and this one's cool. It actually has different tabs. Bent details, metrics comparison, days in trade, performance and charts. Yeah, so there's a lot of cool stuff in this app. But the overall winner for this was AMT. But, you know, you know, I, I would do it on Coke too. 100% win rate. You're in the trade for only 1.86 days. So either one of these is, is fine by me, actually. So hopefully this video gave you some good info to see if you wanted to try the dividend capture strategy for yourself. And if you want to keep track of all your real strategy trades for free, then make sure to check out my site, yieldcollector.com. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Talk to you in the next one.